Welcome back. I've got the um, digital servo here, which I've got in previous uh, videos. It consists of a 300 watt DC motor. It's not really ideally suited as a servo, it's just uh, from an electric bicycle. Connect it to this aluminium load here, this, this mass and uh, quad detector here to measure the angular position. I've got an H bridge here which is acting like a power amplifier providing me a pulse width modulation and here I've got microprocessor in the form of a National Instruments MyRio. Uh, I'm actually using an FPGA there as well for some of the sensors and a, a real-time processor to do the control system part being powered by a 12 volt power supply takes about one amp when it's running but when it's under severe stress and oscillation that can shoot up to 20-30 amps so I've got to be careful not to if it's going to go into oscillation for any any kind of demonstrations not to keep it there for very long otherwise the H bridge there goes up in smoke I've got a user interface over here which runs in LabVIEW uh, it's actually kind of LabVIEW real time uh, you'll see that I've uh, got a phase advance compensator here and a P plus I and I looked at them in previous uh, videos and how you can uh, at least the mathematics of how you can make them up and what you do is you get the analog version which is 1 plus S T2 here over 1 plus S T3 and you use the bilinear transform to convert them and this means that I can specify a set certain as a center frequency for my phase advance in this case it's a hundred Hertz and the design is kind of taken care of I don't need to do any paperwork because the computer's done it for me so it's giving me maximum phase advance at 100 Hz which is quite a big uh, bandwidth that's going to be my unity gain crossover frequency and over here is a P plus I in that form K1 plus ST1 over S integrator plus the um, a sort of lead part so it goes down at minus 20 dp per decade and then it goes flat and that where it goes flat is at 10 hertz so the first cutoff is at 10 hertz in this system and that's not bad again and uh, there's an overall gain of 2000 uh, how did I find that? well very easy to do uh, all I did was I just reduced this gain and, uh, or increased it until it oscillated because when you've got the system set up in this way if the gain is too low or too high then it will oscillate I'm going to turn it down low and then go back here I don't want to make it too low oh, I can see it's beginning to oscillate I'll turn it down a little bit more She goes. How does the current here is shot up? 3.7 amps. I don't want to keep it like that for very long. Over here, you see the dials going mad. Um, so normally it's no oscillations. Uh, that's when there's a little bit of a sort of squeaky noise, and that's when the gain is a bit on the high side. I can keep turning it up. You can hear that. This is due to um, structural resonance in the windings of the motor. Not very nice. I don't want to keep the gain that high either. So compromise is met or I turn it down to this kind of level here. 2000, whatever that means overall, doesn't matter. So I come back here and I've got my servo and I've got a Position 7, I've got my potentiometer which I rotate by hand and I, you can see that it follows beautifully, very fast, as in the other videos. I've also added over here on the program, I've added a, like a gauge which measures the angle 
of the shaft quite accurately up to 360 and then it uh, indicates the net number of revs as you go by there that it goes clocks up to one two three so on there's another one over here which measures the speed but at the moment it's not moving so it's reading zero this rpm what i'm going to do here is show you how a servo like this which runs past 360 degrees position can be used to um, control velocity as well and how I do that so I go over here first and zero everything and then I uh, put a ramp into the system and if I put a ramp in as a set point then that's effectively a velocity set point so the speed will uh, it'll, it'll go at a particular velocity depending on the slope of the ramp so I put on a continuous on this mode hang on I've got to slow it down it's gone off into some kind of strange mode there we go now this control here increases the speed you can see the angle now going round and round because it's going past 360 and here's the shaft of the motor itself I can slow it really low by making the slope of the slope of the uh, signal going in to be very uh, low and I can bring it almost to a standstill there we go it's a very very slow velocity now the gradient is very small of the ramp that's going in and if I keep going it reverses faster and faster and faster that's reading about 400 rpm let's go up positive now that should be about 100 rpm if we go over here there's the angle rotating around and you can see the rpm is reading more or less 100 and that's the number of rotations is 22 so far we can increase this Increasing the speed, speeds nearly 400 rpm. That's really racing right now. And the uh, shaft of the motor is going at constant velocity. Bring it back down again. Down to zero. And there she goes. Slightly negative now. And I can I can also hold it. So if I move it forward, I can halt, hold it, hold the shaft at a particular place. Let's see here, and you'll see it's actually quite tough to move. There's no gearbox here, but had a gearbox, it'd be almost impossible to move it. This is just being held by the you know, like dynamics of the motor itself. No gears at all. And it's uh, now that's because we've got the PI controller. We've got the very high gain at low frequencies, which is doing that. If I was to reduce this frequency here, which is at 10 hertz, down to a very you know one hertz. It would, it would it would won't be so um, it would stay there so well because any disturbance that I put into it would it wouldn't be rejected so well. Okay, so I can I'm holding it there. I can let it go and stop it at any angle I like. Uh, it's actually quite accurate the angle measurement. Slowing it down again to zero, negative, positive, speeding it up. You can imagine it could be like on a winch. And I can slow it down where it's just turning around, put it on hold. And I'm back to manual control now.
of position. I should be take this off. Oh, right there, I should have manual control. So I'm back to a position controller. So if you've got a position controller that works past 360 degrees, you can quite easily uh, put a ramp into it and you, you get a speed controller. Perhaps not the best way to have a speed controller. I mean, a better way is just to um, measure speed and feed that back. But um, it's just to illustrate a point here that um, you can uh, go from one to the other quite easily. Okay, so um, that's it. Perhaps I'll just show a little bit of the code. Uh, now, the code's written in LabVIEW uh, and real time LabVIEW uh, FPGA, or real time the real-time system and the FPGA. This is the FPGA code, so it doesn't really mean an awful lot um, as it stands. Sorry, this is the real-time code. Oh, oh, where's the mouse? Yeah, so I'm going to turn it off. This is a this is a, a 10 kilohertz loop here, real-time loop, and this is taking data from the FPGA, things like the set point position, uh, tackle count, um, period of the uh, measuring the velocity and so on position of the shaft scaling it and you know to get the shaft angle over here is the PI control as a VI wouldn't mean an awful lot unless you look at the my other videos on how to um, design such a thing but it's a basically a difference equation these go out to on the edge of the loop here, which are, oh, let's expand this, the shift register here, these are all registers, so they store the current value and then you get the previous value back here, the other side of the loop, so it's just like storing the value, and over here is the phase advance, some other sort of thing, just mathematical expressions, current inputs and outputs and previous inputs and outputs in the formula. We need the sampling rate to go into both of these. There's the sampling rate, which is quite high, it's 10 kilohertz. You don't have to have a sampling rate that high, but I'm really trying to push the bandwidth of this. I've got a bandwidth of just over 100 hertz. I moved it up to about uh, 300 hertz at one point but started to scream and rattle around so I moved it back a bit. Uh, the FPGA information is uh, somewhere else. That's on the Project Explorer. Here it is. That's the FPGA code. And these are just infinite loops. Uh, let me see, this one creates pulse width modulation. That one, so this one, uh, the, the width of the pulses changes and that goes out, uh, digital out, and goes to the H bridge. This guy here is, measures the angle for the quad detector set point. This one here does this, it's the same program, it does it for the shaft of the motor because they're identical uh, quad detectors. This is just a forward reverse switch. And down here measures this, the velocity, the speed. Uh, I've got to do a little bit of averaging because it's not as accurate as it probably could be. So I sort of average some samples to get a more accurate uh, period way of the waveform. Uh, these loops are running reasonably fast. That one's running at a megahertz. Uh, that one's not running. The PWM isn't running so fast. That's 100 uh, microseconds. This one's running at... Um, oh, it depends. That's um, That varies, doesn't it? Okay. Right, so that's the FPGA information and anything that comes out of the FPG here you can feed to the real-time processor. The real-time processor 
is servo host and that's this what we were looking at. It takes a little bit of getting used to all the little bits but that's how we can uh, control the position and the velocity digitally. So it's a digital servo that runs past 360 degrees continuously as many, many turns as you like. You can also um, put a ramp in and get uh, velocity control as well. Thank you very much.